let's start with the Coppa Italia because Inter come back against Fiorentina in the final. And Jules, Lautaro steals the show. Uh, second Again. goal, I thought. Yeah. Especially, especially special. Amazing but goal. In some ways, given the way Fiorentina play, given the fact that they're so open, they're so attacking, Italiano, you know, clearly an early pep disciple yeah, in yeah, terms yeah, of, sure, of sure. wanting the ball, demanding the ball. Is this foreshadow this in any way how Inter might approach Istanbul? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there are maybe you can find similarities between the way Fiorentina play and, and Manchester City, although City are a much better team, of course, and they certainly defend better. There's maybe, a slight gap of quality. Yeah, and maybe yeah. of not so naive maybe than Fiorentina in some aspect of the game. But Fiorentina played well and they got the ball, they played with the ball, they created a lot of problems for for Inter in the start of the game certainly when they scored a goal and it's a lovely goal and then especially towards maybe the last half hour or 20 minutes where Jovic really should have scored one maybe even two um, but in between we saw a very resilient clinical Inter very well organized Inter again that I think we will see exactly in the final against City yeah I'm mean, gonna you said there the, the in between part the fact that they got back into the game I can give uh, you give Inter rightly credit for that yeah the last 30 minutes. What happened? I, honestly, this is what would worry me if 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 I were Simone Inzaghi. Yeah, I agree. Because, you know what? Look, look, City are heavy favorites for the final. But you can see a scenario where Inter find themselves in the lead. It's not impossible. No, yeah. But then if that last 25, 30 minutes, you can't, you suffer the way you did. You can't keep the ball further away from your goal for extended stretches, mm -hmm. you're going to run into a serious, serious problem against Manchester City because, hey, guess what? It's not Jovic up front. It's Erling Braut, Holland. Yeah, no, you're right. And to be fair, we've you know, we've seen Inter controlling games well, especially against against Milan, for example, in the Champions League semi-final. But we also know that Inzaghi likes to pre-plan his, his substitutions mm -hmm. and then maybe sometimes not react enough to what's happening in the game because the plan is already in place and in, in he's programmed everything where I thought some of these substitutions, I mean, the way he managed that game yesterday when they were really under pressure and they should not have been. I know Fiorentina are a good team, but Inter being 2-1 up should have been more in control of the last 20, 20, 30 minutes than what they were under so much pressure. And I don't think he really addressed it and responded to it, which again, like if that happens against City, could be a big problem. It's an interesting one because when we talk about sort of pragmatic approaches, right? Uh, you talk about reacting to the opposition. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, look, it's always a choice a manager makes. And generally, the rule of thumb is if you're stronger than the opposition, you make them react to you and, and the other way around. That's the way it's kind of been yeah. historically. Inter are a more talented team than Fiorentina. Um, but the fact is Fiorentina weren't going to react to the way Inter play. Fiorentina were going to play their, their game. game. Yeah, they were going to true. take chances. Yeah, yeah. And they were going to... And I kind of feel like you have to you have to be able to to manage that. You have to be able to to, to, to kill that off a little bit. Um, on the substitution, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? You know what he's going to do. Boom, Gagliardini and Lukaku, yeah, Lukaku coming on. Exactly. Uh, first of all, Gagliardini after, I mean, maybe he wanted him to atone for his stupid red, red card, card at the at weekend. The weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but whatever, you know, he's going to be suspended in the league. Fine. Um, but the, the Lukaku for Dzeko thing, Jacko not happy. No, and I'm not wondering, at all. I, and we saw, we saw Mancini, or saw Mancini, <laughs> Freudian laps. We saw Simone Inzaghi sit there and kind of like stand in front of Lukaku, uh, of Jacko and explain why the substitution, blah, blah, blah. It's not good optics. No. And again, like, I'm not really sure it was the right substitution to make at that time either. And Lukaku has been very good coming off the bench for them, for, for sure. There's no no problem. And his relationship with Lautaro is great. We know that. We've known that from before, uh, before he left and come back. So, okay, I get I get that, all of that. But I'm not sure it's the right message sent to Dzeko to start with, who you would expect him to start in the final. This is the team that's going to start yeah. unless, of course, Mkhitaryan comes back and the bros goes back on the bench. You've got the team there with Onana in goal, of course, and now Handanovic. I just don't know. I mean, they won it and maybe they have that know-how because they win finals. Yeah. That's what they do. But you're right. A few things yeah. to be worried about. 
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.